but let's just get started with the setup. So as soon as we go ahead and open this, your Mac should be turning on. If it doesn't, press this button. And if it doesn't, just let it charge for a little bit. Although the battery shouldn't technically be completely dead once you get this, because that is actually not good for your Mac, that could actually happen. So just make sure to do that. So this up here is not just your fingerprint, that is also your power button. So here I'll have a better shot. So once again, this is your fingerprint on the top right hand corner, but it's also a button. So you guys can actually hold it down to force shut down your Mac at any point if you have to do that. Other than that, here you have your trackpad where you do have to click for now in order to make any clicks actually work. But later on, we can set it up so we can just tap and not have to click into it because over time, your trackpad will wear out if you keep clicking. Anyways, let's just go with the setup. Tap anywhere, actually click on your trackpad and it's going to bring up this right here. From here, just choose your language. So in this case, I'm going to choose English. So just use your trackpad to get around, to move your mouse Please around. Use English as the main language. Press the return key. You can actually just click here on that arrow or just press the return key on your keyboard. Then it's going to ask you for your country. So you guys can scroll down until you find the one that you want. Or just choose the first Mac one it tells OS you. contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver. Now your Mac will prompt you with VoiceOver. If you want to use that, go ahead. But anyways, we're just going to continue on. And right here, accessibility. So again, you can set this up right now or later on. Actually, anything that we set up right now, we can always change in our system settings later on. But right now, we're just going to put not now. And from here, just choose your Wi-Fi network. In my case, it's tech and design. I'm going to put in my password. For example, if you have any problems with your Wi-Fi, you could use an Ethernet cable. But again, you would need an adapter to use that on your MacBook. Once you put in your password, it's just going to load in. And then, then we're going to get the second page. And right here, we have a software update. So this is something that I recommend doing right away. So we are going to go on and select continue installing system update. Now remember, if you are transferring any information from your old Mac to this Mac, whether you guys used a Mac Mini before, an iMac, maybe another MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, and you're transferring anything onto this one, just use Time Machine, which is built into your Macs. So I highly recommend buying an external hard drive and using Time Machine in order to transfer anything. It's just easier and safer that way. So I do have another video that shows you exactly how to do that. Transfer your information from one Mac to another. On this video, we're just going to be setting up your Mac like it was brand new. This is regardless if you have an iPod ID or not. During this video, you're going to see how to create one or just how to sign in if you already have one. I also want to note that my MacBook right here does have some battery. So on the top right hand corner, I can see my battery level. And if it was too low, I would have to plug it in. But the Mac would let me know that I have to plug it in anyways. Technically, it's best to just let the battery not die out, but get down to 20% or maybe 10% and then charge it up fully. So those cycles are actually important. Although with the new batteries, that memory is not supposed to matter as much, but it actually still does. So we still have to run those cycles once in a while. So that means we bring down the battery up to maybe 10% and then fully charge it up to 100%. And then we do that like about three times. Other than that, you can charge it up at 50% or you can go ahead and not fully charge it. Just charge it up to however much you can at the time if you're running out of time. But for now, all we have to do is just wait. So once the update is done, you're going to see an Apple logo during the process and all that because it will restart. But that means it's going to take you back here. So you do have to start kind of all over. So just select your region going to not now, select your Wi-Fi, put in the password for your Wi-Fi and continue on. From here, finally, we can go into continue. Migration assistant. Again, this is if you were transferring stuff, which for this video, we're not. Because we're assuming you're new or you don't want to transfer anything. From here, you're going to notice that it's going to ask you for an Apple ID. Now, it's really important that you set this up right now. Do not skip it. You could skip it on the left hand side. On the bottom, you're going to see set up later. So if you don't have an Apple ID, just create one. Click on create. So that's on the bottom. You're going to see create. I do have a video that shows you exactly how to create an Apple ID step by step, but it's basically just using your email. So whatever email you guys have right now, whether it's Hotmail, Gmail or anything, really, you can create an Apple ID using that email. 
you're just going to create a password, put in some information, and you're done. And once you create that, we're just going to go to the second step. Now, if you already have an Apple ID, you can write it down right now. So it's just going to ask you for your email. Then it's going to ask us for our password after that. Then you're going to see something like so popping up. You just have to put a click right here to put a check mark. So it's on the left hand side. Then on the right, just click on agree. Some of you might have got a notification with a code on your iPhone if you had an iPhone or any other Apple product. And you would have had to type it up in here. Then we can go on and put any name that you like. You can put Tech Design, like me, or anything else. That's just my YouTube channel, Tech and Design. So that's what I usually use. Unfortunately, we will have to set up a password. I say unfortunately because I don't need one myself, but we're just going to leave it on right now. Later on, we're just going to take it out. But keep in mind that you should keep this check mark here where it says, allow my Apple ID to reset this password. It's just in case you ever forget your password, you can just use your Apple ID in order to reset it. Then on the bottom right -hand corner, again, just click on continue on. By the way, you can change your full name, account name, to anything you would like. Then we're going to see this iCloud. It's just going to set up your account. After just a little bit, you're going to see this. You can always customize your settings on the left hand side. However, for now, we're just going to go into continue. Now, this is your touch ID. Touch ID, by the way, it's also your power button. So it's not just for touch ID. And that will be on the top right hand corner of your keyboard. You're going to see that. So once again, we're just going to press on continue on. And all we have to do is just any finger that you like, actually. Go ahead and hold it here. You're going to lift it up, hold it, 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 lift it up, and you're done. Now, you just do that again. Up, down, up, down. I'm not actually pressing on the button. I'm just placing my finger on top of it. Then press continue, and we're done with that touch ID. You can also set up Apple Pay. You don't have to, but we're just going to continue on. If you don't want to, you can press set up later. So that's going to be an option on your screen that you're going to see. Now, if you skipped Apple Pay or you didn't and you set it up, the next thing you will see is this. You're pretty much done with the setup right now. Just click on OK. So the first thing that you have to check is for updates on your Mac. On the top left hand side corner of your screen, you're going to see the Apple logo. Go into your second option where it says system settings. And then from here, just going to search and put in updates. Then it's going to check for any updates, but, and hopefully you are all up to date. So right now it is. As far as this video, you're all done. You're ready to go. Just remember the basics. You can, as can go on and use Safari, which is your basic web browser. You can download Google Chrome if that's something that you like. You don't need to purchase any apps from the App Store. You can definitely download programs into your Mac that are not from the App Store, just in case. And you can customize your Mac to make it fit for you. So you, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it, but that's another video. That's the manual that I have for your MacBook Pro and or MacBook Air. But as far as this video goes, we are all done. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.